Hello, hello, and welcome once again to a Beatles program that we call Things We Said Today. This is a weekly show that centers on what's going on in the world of the Beatles, what's going on news-wise in the lives of Paul and Ringo, and anything posthumous going on with John and George, and also anything going on concerning the Beatles as a group. I'm Ken Michaels. I'm one of the co-hosts of the show, being joined by Mr. Beatles Examiner, Mr. Monkeys Examiner, Mr. Goldmine Magazine himself. Yuck. I'm yike. Yikes. Wow. Steve um, Marinucci. Hello, everyone. Hello, Ken. How are you doing? Pretty soon it's going to take half an hour just to read all your credits. No, I hope not. <laughs> I hope not. But in any event. So uh, this is the program where, as I said, we discuss what's going on news-wise. Thanks again to Michael Lynch for his wonderful theme song that we use every week on the show. And uh, we should also send a shout-out and a big thanks to the folks at Fab4Radio.com and also Beatlesarama.com for carrying our show. Thank you, guys. On, uh, on today's program... We're going to talk about an interview that Paul McCartney just gave to Rolling Stone magazine. It wasn't really all that lengthy. It centered mainly on his current tour, his Out There tour. And apparently, from what Steve is telling me, it's been getting a big reaction on uh, the Beatles' message boards, mainly because of some comments that Paul made about one of the songs that he's added to the set list on his tour this time, that being being for the benefit of Mr. Kite. Steve? And, and yeah, and it, well, these things get, you know, when Paul gives interviews anyway, people go exploring for stuff, and this particular thing about Mr. Kite was was just kind of ripe for the picking because he, he talked about, he was asked why he added Mr. Kite to the set list, and the interesting thing was he said, I have great memories of writing it with John. I read occasionally people say, oh, John wrote that one. I say, wait a minute, what was that afternoon I spent with him then looking at this poster? And he said, he he used the word, you know, he said that, uh, oh, I was happy to kind of reclaim it as partially mine. And everybody is all freak, is, is getting excited about that and, uh -huh. and and taking Paul as trying to rewrite history. And this is not the first time this argument has come up with Paul McCartney. Right. Um, there was the, 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 I guess, the most famous incident was the switching around of the credits between McCartney and Lennon when he was trying to get Yoko to, to change songwriting credits on a few songs, and she, of course, said no. Hmm. And he was trying to... And, and there was there was some thought that you know he was trying to make her look you know, like a villain or whatever. But number one, I can understand people getting excited about this because this particular song has long been thought of as a John song. John has talked about it in interviews as his, as, quote, his song. And so there's, there's, all sorts of, there's all sorts of history here that is being encroached on when the, things like this happen. I guess the, question, the big question is, does Paul McCartney have, you know, have, have a, a good reason at this point in time to stick up for, for songs that are primarily John's and say, Wait a minute! I had something to do with those too. Yeah, and there's there's arguments going both ways. There's people who say he does not that you know that he's encroaching on John, trying to rewrite history, and you know John's not around to answer back. And what would John say? And you know it's a another thing, a war with Yoko. And there's other people that say yes, he does because he was there. And it's it's an inter, you know it's an interesting discussion. You get people coming both 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 ways for this. Hmm. I can see both points of view, but as far as I'm concerned, I think that people get upset because so many Beatles fans out there, like us, you know, we like to study the Beatles. We like to know every single fact about them. We, want, we, we like to be able to say we know everything there is to know about the Beatles. And the actual fact of the matter is that one thing that I've learned from all the work that I've done all these years is that we'll never know everything there is to know about the Beatles, no matter how much has been written out there. And like I said before, I'm looking forward so much to Mark Lewison's books when they come out. But even then, after those books come out, you may know as much as you're ever going to know, but you're not going to, you're not going to know everything about them. And where John and Paul are concerned, 
they were there when they wrote the songs, whether they wrote them 50-50, whether it was mainly John's, whether it was mainly Paul's, whether it was all John or all Paul. And the fans weren't there, and the authors weren't there, and they could do all the research that they've done, but still, you have to look at the fact that you, when you're dealing with John or Paul or any of the Beatles, whatever they have to say carries a lot of weight no matter what. Right. What, what is kind of upsetting is that you find out about these things so much later on. I mean, this is a song that came out in 1967, and this is the first time Paul has ever said this. My, I mean, uh, he may. Um, he, I mean, these songs have been talked about before. John, of course, talked about all the songs um, during the uh, 1980 Playboy interview, and and I think play. And as I recall, Playboy went back to Paul also, and he did the same thing with his songs. Well, he did, especially in the book uh, many years from now. Right. That is the book to go to to find mm -hmm. out anything about the songs and the Beatles catalog and Paul's take on them. Right. But um, as far as this is concerned, at no point in this very brief interview in Rolling Stone does Paul ever say it's a 50-50 collaboration. He said that he helped out a bit on the song. And, and you can't... Um... You can't take what John and Paul say literally with every single quote. When John was talking about this song in Playboy and he said, it's my song, he may have meant, well, it's mainly my song. He may not have been saying it was 100% my song. You know, people read too much into this. One of the things that I find really interesting about the whole Lennon-McCartney relationship is, and I brought this up when I interviewed Mark Lewison recently, Paul had said, in fact, you had written about this in an article on Julia Baird, because there was a CD that Julia put out, and mm -hmm. there was an interview that Julia did with Paul, where Paul is saying in the interview that, a lot of people think that most of the collaboration that I did with John was mainly in the early years and that all of a sudden it became mainly John or mainly Paul or all John or all Paul. And there was a lot more give and take than, than people actually realize. And I've often thought, especially in the case of Rubber Soul, there's a lot more songs there where you can't just always go to the guy that sings lead and think he's the writer or he wrote all of it. Because you take a song like Drive My Car... I mean, Paul sings lead on that, and Paul is giving credit to John for writing the song with him. You take a song like Norwegian Wood. I'm just picking songs from Rubber Soul here. Sure. We think of that as a John song, but Paul has said that he wrote the song with John, and together they came up with the idea that the house burns down at the end. So uh, a song like um, The Word, Paul recently did live in concert uh, a few years ago. Right. You might think, oh, that's a John song. John sang lead to it. Well, if you follow... You know, what the two of them have said, or especially what Paul has said, that was more of an equal collaboration. You can't just go by which guy sings lead and therefore it's his song. But, you know, there are cases where there were 50-50 collaborations, especially as we know the early songs, She Loves You, I Want to Hold Your Hand, From Me to You, those songs. There are songs where we know, like we can work it out. Paul wrote the verses, John wrote the middle part. A Day in the Life, where John wrote most of the song and Paul wrote the middle part. There are, there are isolated examples like those where you know what each guy contributed there. But on so many songs, it's very possible that maybe Paul added a few words to a John song. And there were so many, you know, there's so many songs over the course of their canon. That they, I mean, such a wide range of songs over a, you know, a long span of time that there's no doubt at least, uh, at least there. I mean, if you just think about it, there's there can be no doubt that things changed over a course of time. That there was a time when one was one guy was hot and one guy wasn't, or just the matter of writing a particular song. I mean, think a, a lot of things happened over over you know the course of all all the time they wrote together, and to to expect that it was the same all the time or that one person wrote one one particular song especially if you weren't there to see it uh -huh. and it's and it's crazy you know that there are these experts and i you know i'm not putting anybody down and i certainly don't call myself an expert of of you know what's happened as far as i mean the i, I don't consider myself the, the end authority because i don't think there is any 
end authority except for them themselves. But, you know, I mean, there's just no way to consider that that Paul didn't have something to do with this. I, I mean, mean, I'm reading the quote here, and if you, I mean, you read most of it. But he's saying here, um, we put in, there will be a show tonight. So those few words were added to the lyrics. As most fans know, the lyrics, for the most part, were taken from a Victorian poster. And it was uh, for a circus. Um, right. It was um, while the Beatles were doing their video for Strawberry Fields, which was um, done in Kent. There was a, a poster that John saw in an antique store, and he ended up buying it. And then he lifted most of the lines from this song from that poster. Mm -hmm. There were some changes made. But it just sounds to me like, you know, Paul was there. He added a few words. He's not saying that he wrote most of the song. He's not even saying he wrote the melody of the song. He's just saying here that he added a few words to the song, or together they added a few words. Right. And that is, in its own way, a collaboration. Whether it's 98% John or 2% Paul or 80% John or 20% Paul, it's still a collaboration. Can many, collaboration can mean many different things. And, and over the course of the Lennon-McCartney partnership, the uh, extent of that collaboration certainly, I mean, logic only dictates that it, it wasn't the same all the time. Any, any songwriting team, you know, had the same the same situation going you know so it's it's strange i mean i can i can see with that that lennon mccartney thing with switching the names around that was a pretty you know that was a pretty serious i moment. think it was a little bit silly but then i can't tell paul how to feel and in the early days of the beatles the early records like please please me they were Actually released as McCartney, mccartney lennon. lennon yeah so yeah i mean there's there's so much going. There's so much going on with this, and 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 why people. Uh, well, I, I just I don't I don't agree with people getting all serious and and thinking that Lennon's being taken out of the picture. For one, I mean the fact that he, that Paul is alive and John is not is unfortunate to the fact that Paul's image is that Paul's uh, you know. Paul is out there a lot more, and I'm not trying to use the tour name, but I mean, P Paul is there, and John is not. And even, you know, and look at look at the amount of news, for example, that even Ringo has created over the last year, and John and George have not. You know, there hasn't been that much doing on the on the on the Lennon Harrison front to, for the to moment. talk about for the moment. Right for the moment, but I mean, even even so. You know, there's only going to be so much. I mean, that the movie last year, the George Harrison movie, the, the the Martin Scorsese documentary, was a great, you know, was great to have out there, and I'm, I'm you know, I'm very glad it was done. Um, all faults of it aside, you know, to, it was great to see it. John hasn't had a a documentary, although Yoko has done several. There hasn't been a big John documentary in a while, and it's probably we're probably due for one. I'm sure it'll come out. I'm sure. At, I'm at sure some point, will. there will um, be something there on John. There'll be a flurry of activity at some point in the future. Mm -hmm. And or you know, and or exhibits with new pictures. I, you know, there's always there's always that possibility. I mean, something new uh, uh, with John is out there. You know, all the time. Uh, I, I just wrote last night that uh, Julian is doing a an auction uh, this weekend with a signed copy of his book, which. Has you know, which is Beagle connected. Um, so there's you know something there. Um, yeah, but the issue is not so much whether or not John's in the news more than Paul. The issue really is that Paul is talking about something here about a song from quite a while ago, 1967 here, and it's information that we never heard about before. It's well, not. I, it's I, not I, to me earth-shattering information. But the point is that you would think that. After all these years, we'd know everything about every Beatles song, and the reality is we're probably never going to. No, that that part is true. And But the other thing is that Paul is around to say these things, and John is not around to counter his point of view. And even if Yoko says anything, Yoko's point of view isn't John, because uh, she wasn't there mm -hmm. for a lot of this stuff. So it's really hard to, it's really hard to say that, well, you know, uh, on this particular subject, 
-hmm. You know, I can be just as guilty. I'm just being honest here, as some of the people who are being critical here, because, and this is, again, something I brought up to Mark Lewison, uh, the whole issue about Blackbird, what he has said in, in recent years, that it was a song at the time he, he was recognizing the struggles and the civil movement here in the United States and what black women were going through, and he wrote the song mm-hmm. to address that. And throughout the 60s and the decades that followed, we never heard anything about that about Blackbird. And all of a sudden he's saying that, although he, it is mentioned in many years from now. But why do you wait so many years before you reveal information about that? Yeah. You know, that's the troubling thing. I'm not saying that Paul is being dishonest about the song. I'm just saying when all this information comes out so many years later about music that's, you know, 30, 40 years old, sometimes you kind of question it. But then at the same time, I also feel like he is, you know, the writer of that song, the co-writer of Lennon McCartney songs. Who are we? To, to judge him and to what he's saying because he was there. He's, he's the, I think he's given the, the circumstance of this, especially this particular interview, the fact that he he was asked about the song, he was asked about you know why the, that particular song, you know why the songs were brought into the show into the tour show. It was kind of, it kind of opened him, opened up an opportunity for him to talk about it. So, I mean, I, I, there may be times, there may be interviews down the road where he says things. I mean, we all know that Paul loves to talk, uh, talk about the Beatles. He loves to spin stories. There's always been the... Well, what, what do you mean spin stories? Well, I spin as, I'm not trying to say mix things up. I mean, he, he is very, he's very good for his own to, to get attention in the press by, you know, talking about the Beatles, as has Ringo to a certain extent now. Um, well, he knows it'll get attention, it'll get he knows, headlines. Right. He knows yeah. it'll get attention. And in this particular case, I, I wouldn't, I mean, I think there are people that suggest that what he said about Mr. Kite was on purpose and to, you know, and to definitely get attention and, you know, and was planned. And I don't think that was the case at all. And I think there's going to be other instances down the road where Paul gets asked about things and he starts to talk about various things and these other other items are going to come up and it's going to, this is going to in other words this is going to happen again and i think people just have to kind of look at it and say you know he was there you know there are things that he knows that nobody else knows and he's got a right to say it mm-hmm. on the other hand though he, I think he knows, although I don't know that he cares, he knows that he has to be careful with what he says because he knows it's going to get reaction, number one, from the fans and maybe even from Yoko. And in that case, it, it, it gets a lot of reaction in the press. It gets the Beatles more publicity, which, of course, you know, is always a good thing in terms of getting publicity, you know, publicity especially today with the celebrity-centered uh, internet and so you know everything that they jump on everything you say but uh you know it's i think this is going to happen again and well you know what really gets me about this what i mean we we mentioned that book many years from now which mm-hmm. i happen to really enjoy i really want to go back and reread it all over again but mm-hmm. if you read that book you're going to find that paul gives lots of credit to the other beatles for certain songs it's not like it's all about him and what he's done so, like, for example, one that I, that I always like to bring up is We Can Work It Out. Mm-hmm. The part in the song where they slow down to a waltz time, that idea came from George Harrison. And he brings that up in the book. So he's giving credit to someone else other than himself. And just like in the Martin Scorsese film, he brings up And I Love Her, and that George came up with that guitar riff. And it was great to know that. You know, right. why would he do that? He's, he, I think that it's important to Paul that the world recognized the Beatles as a great band where everybody contributed something. And I think they're, they're at the point now, and they weren't at this point, especially you know in the 70s when everything was still bitter, but they're at the point now where they're all comfortable with each other pretty much, I think. Paul may still have some, some minor issues with the way 
John gets talked up a lot, but that's only natural. George gets talked up a lot, too, although not well, nearly as much, I think, as he should. The point that I'm trying to make with this is that why is it okay when Paul gives credit to the other members for certain things? Or he praises John for certain songs, like he loves Strawberry Fields and he loves Tomorrow Never Knows. Why is that okay? But when he gives himself just a little bit of credit, then he gets criticized. When he starts um, to take credit for certain things, that's not okay. I think be I be think because he's always, as a you know as a as a musician, he's always talking about himself a lot more than he is talking about everybody else, and that's there's they people I think feel there's an imbalance there, and you're at, you know you got a you have an excellent point that he doesn't get recognized for that as much as he should. And I really think that every Beatle fan should read that book because I think they'll have a different perspective of Paul. They'll learn mm -hmm. a lot more about him and about the Beatles. And also the whole thing about going beyond the music, wanting to establish himself as being someone who was there at the very beginning of the underground movement. You know, he was there with John Dunbar at the beginning of the Indica Gallery, and hanging out real, with Peter Asher real... and all that. But, but I'm bringing this up only because John always has the image of being the way out one, the avant-garde one, because of his association with Yoko. You know, and then Paul, in recent years, wants to really bring that out. Right. So and that's, a, that's a point specifically that Peter Asher talks about in his live show, because Dunbar, uh, and he and Dunbar um, got, the, got the bookstore together, um, where, or the gallery together, I'm sorry, the Indica, where John and Yoko uh, met and... Um, you know, Paul was very Paul was very involved with that bookstore, and he was also uh, involved with the uh, with the Car Carnival of Light, the infamous Carnival of Light that we'll never hear. Uh huh. Um, and you know, and, and pa Paul, you know, there's actually there's a whole book, and I can't remember the title of it right now, but there's a whole there's a whole book about Paul's avant garde history, and I, I you kind of wonder sometimes if he kind of feels a little uh, slighted over the fact that John gets all the credit for that. He doesn't. I think it does, and he has every right to. And he, but he's done. I mean, he's done his his avant garde stuff. I mean, the, uh, for which people, uh, a lot of people don't recognize that. Well, a lot of people, a lot of people have also kind of put it down. Those you know, that you know, those first couple of Fireman albums kind of got kind of got slammed pretty bad. Well, everybody has their own definition of what avant garde is or experimental music, and Paul's been doing it throughout his whole solo career. If you really look carefully through a lot of his albums and mm -hmm. pick certain tracks. But you can't just pick the fireman and say that's it. No. You know, and, he's done I mean, a George lot of did it too. George did it in yeah. electronic songs. You know, when one Beatle gets all the credit in for a particular thing or in being in one direction the way that John was with the avant garde stuff, which wasn't just Yoko. You know, John loved to to do experimental music too. But Yoko uh, certainly helped. Oh, she uh, she, she was, pushed him. Yeah, she was a she was a great help as far as that goes. There's no, you know, no question about it. And and her influence on his avant garde career can't be understated. I mean, she was she was fantastic. And I really, uh, you know, that I think I mentioned it here before, having seen that lecture that she did at Stanford University a, a couple of years ago. That was just amazing. And I really wish she was into doing more of that stuff because. Those are, it was really uh, illuminating her going through her old life and, and doing part of uh, cut piece on stage and things like that. It was, it was just amazing to see that. Right. Well, uh, you know, one other thing that I want to bring up, and actually this, this is actually a show to itself, mm -hmm. is the fact that I think that all of us, myself included, can be guilty at times because we have a tendency to think for years and years... You know, if John sang lead on the song, it's his song. If Paul sang lead, it's his song. And it, to some degree, in most cases, it's mainly their songs. You know, that's the way it was. But sometimes we tend to overlook the fact that on Beatles recordings, all the members could have made major contributions in sure. any way, shape, or form mm -hmm. that had a way of, of really um, shaping the song. Mm -hmm. Whether it's a guitar lick that George could have come up with, whether it's... Uh, a line in a song that John or Paul wrote for the other one, mm -hmm. whether it's vetoing a certain part of the song, like I saw her standing there when Paul came up with, she was just 17, she'd never been a beauty queen, and John said no. 
That's not a good line. Taking that out, well, that is a collaboration. It doesn't mean that John wrote all the lyrics of the song, but if he told Paul to take that out, or in the case of Hey Jude, as Paul has told the story a million times, the movement you need is on your shoulder. Paul thought was a horrible lyric. John said, leave that in. Mm -hmm. Well, that is a contribution. Right. John didn't write the line, but who knows? Paul might have taken it out if and John you didn't a say good that. Point about the fact that there's probably little contributions that George and Ringo made to various songs that are never got really credited properly. And George Martin as well. George Martin, especially as well. in the arrangements of the songs. Right. You know, so there's a lot more that goes into the records than who wrote it. And sometimes I'm probably more guilty than a lot of fans in thinking this way because I always tend to think of the writer, the song belongs to the writer first and the group second. Well, that's been the traditional thinking. I mean, everybody seems to have... And if you... I mean, I remember way back when, for anybody that remembers Hit Parader magazine, they ran a, a list of all the Beatles songs and they put you know, who sang lead, and, and, and yeah, the, the idea is to, you know, the inference is that the person who sang lead had the biggest part of the song, and while they, that may be true, it may not have always been true, and right. to what extent it was true, you know, certainly varied, it certainly varied. You could take a song like Day Tripper, which, by most accounts, is a John Lennon song, mainly John Lennon. Right. Paul sings the lead mm -hmm. on the verses. You know, and I know John said that was because he couldn't handle the lead, so he let Paul do it. So it's not as if, you know, whoever who sang it had to be the main writer. A song like Every Little Thing, which I named my show for. Uh, you know, you, you hear uh, John sing the lead on the verses, and that's right. supposed to be mainly a Paul song. So it doesn't always apply. Right. Most of the time, it did, but it wasn't 100%. And I know a lot of fans would like for everything to be in black and white, but it wasn't that way with the Beatles. Right. What all four of them contributed is kind of complicated. Also, the fact that the Beatles, with the exception of Ringo, between John, Paul, and George, they, they shifted instruments around. Mm -hmm. You know, it wasn't always George that did the lead, lead guitar. You know, it could be John, it could be Paul. It wasn't always Paul that played bass. You know, so it made them a much more fascinating group and one where... You know, they each contributed so much more than just having a traditional role in the group. Right, right. So I don't think fans should get too upset about this because, like I said, you know, Paul's not claiming that it's a 50-50, and he's just saying that he helped John write it. He was yeah, there and, to uh, witness as the song was being written. I don't know that uh, some people's feelings are going to change, but who knows? All right, so if any of you would like to get in touch with us, you can write to us at our email address, which is things we said today radio show at gmail dot com and don't be afraid to to yell at us and complain. who knows we may even read your letter on the air someday <laughs> and Steve will do all the yelling in in the voice of our listener oh okay um also. You can get in touch with me at my email address, which is everylittlething at att.net. And please check out my website, kenmichaelsradio.com. I also have a Facebook page for Ken Michaels, so please like me. I really we wish like you it. would like we me. We like you. We like you. <laughs> you really like me. <laughs> and as for you, Steve? Oh, they can, they can find me on Facebook under my name, and I have pages for Beatles Examiner and all my other Examiner columns. And you can write to me directly at BeatlesExaminer at gmail dot com, and we'd love to hear from you. We're, do you know, realize we're getting close to fifty shows? Wow, we are getting close to fifty shows. And uh, you know, if you have ideas, if you have ideas that uh, you'd like us to talk about, uh, let us know. We'd love to hear from you. Yeah, we really appreciate your input. Yes, that and we do. Uh, you know, you'd be surprised. We'll take your ideas. You know, we we are proud of the fact that we try to center on what's going on news-wise with the Beatles, but there are some slow periods here and there, so sometimes we need a suggestion from you folks. So if you can, please write to us. And again, our email address is things we said today radio show at gmail dot com. And who knows? We may, like I said, we may even read your letter on the show. And so there. Yeah, and and if you compliment us. If you compliment Steve, he'll definitely read it. <laughs> True. If you compliment me, I won't believe it. But, you know. Oh, okay. All right. So, for things we said today, 
I'm Ken Michaels, thanking each and every one of you for listening, and I'll see you next time. And this is Steve Marinucci, thanking everyone out there that's picking up the show and listening to us, and we will see you next time. <laughs>